Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we continue the course of advanced mathematics for high school students. It's presented on unizor.com and that's the website which uh, I'm recommending you to um, listen to this lecture uh, because it contains the notes for every lecture including this one um, and it helps you to basically follow the logic maybe much, much, much better. Now, um, today we will talk about the number E, which I have introduced in the previous lecture as um, a function, actually, as a base of a, uh, uh, the base of the function, which, which has a very important property. Um, if you recall, these exponential functions have a shape something like this with the base greater than one. Now, um, I have introduced the concept of a steepness at point zero in this particular case, which is basically um, a characterization of this angle angle of the tangential line at the point zero. Apparently this angle is less than 45 degrees with um, function um, exponential function with a base is equal to a and it's greater than 45 when exponential function has a base equal to 3. So the tree goes something like this, much steeper. And its angle will be greater than 45 angle. So I presume that there is some number in between 2 and 3, some real number, which if used as a base um, of uh, exponential function, it will have this uh, tangential line exactly at 45 degrees. And I call this number E. And as a consequence of this, as a consequence of this, I have come up with the following thing. How can I determine um, uh, the, the value of this angle? Well, basically it's very simple. I, um, let me just make it in a larger scale. Okay, here is my larger scale. Um, now, this is zero. Uh, I will step from zero by one nth, where n is some number. All right? And then I will take a chord, basically. Now, if I will divide this piece, which is basically a to the power of one n minus one, because at zero, all the exponential function are equal to zero. So this is this piece. And divide by this piece, which is equal to 1 n. Now, what does it mean that my tangential line would be at angle of 45 degrees? Well, it means that this particular ratio will be almost 1, because at 45 degrees, these are two uh, catchety of uh, right triangle. With the 45 degrees, catheters are equal to each other, right? So basically, um, the uh, the steepness can be characterized by this ratio. Now, if I will increase n, so my point comes closer and closer to zero, my chord will be closer and closer to the tangential line. So if this ratio tends to one. as my n goes to infinity. That means that my tangential line would be at angle 45 degrees. So basically I have determined um, that there is some kind of a number um, which is, if used as e, then this would be tending to one. That's how, that's how I define basically um, the number e. 
as a base of an exponential function which has this type of a tendency, right? Okay, now um, I um, kind of presume that this particular approximation exists and the approximation is um, is, is, is better and better as n increasing to, inc to infinity from which I have derived that e to the 1n approximately equals to 1n plus 1, right? So 1 plus 1n over n and then I raise both sides into n degrees so e is approximately 1 plus 1n to the n. Now, these manipulations with approximation is not exactly rigorous mathematically. So, today I'm, um, I'm going to prove the following thing. That this sequence does have a limit. Um, and then you can actually say that this limit is, is, is E, this number E. Alright, so this is the most important goal of my today's lecture to prove that this sequence has a limit as n goes to infinity and this limit since I know it exists I call it E. Now I definitely know that this limit is in between 2 and 3 because in the previous lecture I actually proved that this expression for any n is in between 2 and 3. It's greater than 2 and less than, e, uh, than less than 3. So there is some number in between 2 and 3, some real number, um, which I can call basically the letter E. All right. So how can I prove that this thing has a limit a little bit more rigorously than what I did uh, in the previous lecture? The previous lecture was kind of an intuitive approach. Now I will make it a little bit more um, rigorous. Now, um, there was a theorem which I have proved in uh, one of the previous lectures uh, dedicated to limits, that if I have a sequence which is monotonically increasing and bound from above, let me just do it graphically. So this is my boundary A and my uh, sequence is monotonically increasing and always less than A. So my points are here. So the theorem says that if my sequence is monotonically increasing and always bounded on the top by some constant A, then there is a limit um, and this limit is actually the least upper bound uh, for this particular sequence, which is called supremum. So, what my point ri right now is that I will use this theorem which states that if it's bounded and monotonically increasing, then there is a limit. And that's what actually I have to prove here, that there is a limit, which I can call the number E. So, if I will prove that this is monotonically increasing sequence, I already know it's bounded from above by the number 3, that would be sufficient to prove that there is a limit. And if there is a limit, I can call it anything I want, including this beautiful letter E, which mathematicians like very much. All right, so all I have to prove, again, this. That's what monotonically increasing means, right? That the next one is greater than the previous one. Now, there are actually many different methods uh, to approach this including some tricky manipulations with uh, powers, etc. What I have decided is to do it, well, relatively straightforward, um, although maybe um, a little lengthier than some other methods. 
I will just use the binomial formula in both cases. Now, the binomial formula, again, it was discussed before in one of the lectures before, and you know that this is the following. Um, it's sum of the common member. Common member is, coefficient is um, n factorial divided by n minus a factorial and i factorial i from 0 to n from 0 times a to the power n minus i b to the power of i all right that that's the general binomial formula by newton so i will use this formula for this and for this case and that will basically prove that every element of the sum on the left would be greater than uh, the corresponding element uh, of the sum on the right. That's what I'm going to prove. Now, one more interesting thing. The number of elements in this sum, in this case it's n, in this case it's n minus 1. So, um, the number of elements is greater than here. So, from, zero, fr from 1 um, uh, from from 0 to n and here from 0 to n minus 1 so what I will get to do is uh, that if every member on the left is greater than corresponding member on the right plus in addition this member also has one extra member that would make it even better right all right so all I have to do is have ith member of this sum I will compare with ith member of that sum and I will show that one is greater than another. All right? For every i from 0 to n minus 1. Now, what's my i-th member on the left? Well, a is 1, so I don't need this. And b is 1 over n, so this is 1 over n to the power of i. Now, that's my member on the left ith member where i is 0 1 2 3 etc up to n on the on the right uh, it's correspondingly n minus 1 factorial divided by n minus i minus 1 factorial i factorial and 1 over n minus 1 factorial so i would like to prove that this is greater than this Okay, um, here's how I can do it. First of all, i factorial present in here and here. So if I will compare it, I don't really need this. I will prove that this is greater than this. Both are containing this um, multiplier i factorial, so it doesn't really change the relationship between them. So how can I prove that this is greater than this? Let me... Um, uh, open all these factorials in this particular case. What is n factorial? It's n times n minus 1, etc., etc., up to 1. n minus i factorial is starting from n minus 1 to 1. So if I will divide one by another, let me just write it again, what happens here. This is n, n minus 1, etc., 1. And n minus i n minus i minus 1, etc., 1. So, somewhere along the line, starting from n minus i, I can basically uh, reduce it a certain number. And what will be left here? On the top, I will have n minus, etc., n minus i plus 1. Starting from next one, n minus i, it will be reduced with, with the denominator, right? And this is divided by n to the i's degree. Similarly, this one would be, n, starting from n minus 1, I will have certain number of... Um, multipliers and the last one would be n minus i because starting from the next one n minus y i minus one it would be reduced with denominator so it would be n minus one 
uh, n minus 2, etc., n minus i. That would be my last member. Divided by n minus 1. Uh, I did have factorial. No, that's wrong. n minus 1. Uh, n minus i, sorry. n minus i to the i's degree. n minus 1 to the i's degree. Okay, now how can we compare these? Well, this is actually quite easy um, because um, let's spread this n to the i's degree as n times n times n, etc. n times n, etc. Same thing here. n minus 1 times n minus 1, etc. n minus 1. It's i multipliers on the top and i multipliers on the bottom. Same thing here. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show that any member of any um, uh, result of a division of the corresponding member on the top divided by bottom, which is n minus k divided by n. That's the common member, right? Where k is 0, 1, etc., i minus 1, right? That's my last k. Here, the common member is also n minus k minus uh, 1 divided by n minus 1 where k is 0, 1, etc., i minus 1, right? Because if k is uh, i minus 1, so it's i minus 1 plus 1, and minus 1, it will be minus i, right? So, this is a product of these, and this is the product of these. But look, every this one, member of this product is greater than this one. k is exactly the same. Now, n minus k divided by n is greater than n minus k minus 1 divided by n minus 1. Now, why is this obvious? Well, because this is equal to 1 minus k over n, right? And this equals to 1 minus k uh, divided by n minus 1, right? So from 1 we subtract this and from 1 we subtract this. This is less than this because the numerators are the same denominator, this is bigger denominator, so the ratio is smaller, so we are subtracting a smaller number, so the result would be bigger than this one. So that's why this is bigger. And that's why this is bigger than this one and this why and that's why the product of these is greater than the product and everything is going back to uh, original um, inequality. So, that's how I have proven that my sequence is monotonically increasing. Now, since it's monotonically increasing and it's bounded from the up by number 3, uh, and it's actually bounded uh, on the bottom by number 2, it means that my limit exists. This is a valid formula, valid expression. There is such a limit. And I call it E. Now, E happened to be irrational number. The approximate value is 2.71, but then it goes to infinity, obviously, it's a rational number. And it plays a very significant role in the analysis, as I was basically telling you many times. All right. Now, the only uh, one thing more I would like to add to this particular expression. What I will do now, I will prove this.
So from this, I will prove this. So if I will have e to the power of x, then it's the limit of, instead of 1, I will have x here. Now, how can it be proved? Well, intuitively, again, it's obvious. And here is why. Now, n is uh, uh, increasingly, inf infinitely increasing number, right? x is just a fixed number. It's just some real number, x, whatever it is. So, um, x over n is decreasing, obviously, right? Now, in this particular case, we have the same thing. The denominator here and the power there. And we know it goes to a constant. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider this. Let's consider x is not equal to 0, all right? I multiply by x and divide it by, by x. Now, when I multiply something in the power, as you remember, a to the power of b to the power of c is equal to a to the power of bc, right? So, this is equal to 1 plus x over n n over x and then over there I have another power of x, right? That's what it is. It's the same thing. This is n. n is n times x divided by x. So n divided by x I'm using here and x is there. Now, let me ask you, what's the difference between this inside the square brackets. What's the difference between this and this? n is increasing to, in, to, to, to infinity, right? Now, that means n divided by x, where x is some kind of a constant. Well, let's assume right now it's not equal to 0. It's a positive constant. n is also increasing to infinity. I mean, n over x is also increasing to infinity in exactly the same fashion. So it doesn't really matter whether it's n or n divided by 2 or n divided by 3 and 7 quarters, it doesn't really matter what kind of a constant is here. The limit of this inside the square brackets is the same thing, e. And that's why the whole thing is e to the power of x. So without actually going into more detailed um, analytical uh, calculations, with, uh, um, which goes to a definition of limit, which, which means that for every distance d we have to find number n, which uh, makes our uh, uh, sequence closer than d to this limit, etc. I don't want to go into all these details. They, they, they are trivial in this case. But intuitively, you, intuitively you, you, you perfectly understand that that's exactly how it's supposed to be done. So, since this is true and n is going to infinity, then this is exactly the same kind of limit, whether it's x divided by n or 1 divided by n. doesn't matter because x is a constant and it's exactly the same in the power and here. All right, so that concludes my uh, last statement which I wanted to make, namely... this. Um, now, it's very important actually to understand that there are many different approaches to the same thing and the more different approaches you found which lead you to the same thing, the more natural it becomes and if you wish even beautiful the theory is if you can approach the same formula from different sides, right? So. In this particular case, this is one of the solutions which I am offering, and there are some others as well. My purpose was to introduce you to this particular limit. That, that's the purpose of this particular lecture. All right. Um, thanks very much. I suggest you to read the notes on unisor.com to this uh, lecture, or listen to it again. I mean, it's always beneficiary. And um, so, for those people who really want to get a little bit more involved, 
uh, in uh, taking exams, for instance, um, and, and, and getting some grades, um, you can uh, sign um, as, as a student to the website, to unisor.com, and, uh, and then uh, uh, you will probably have to have a supervisor who will assign, or, uh, uh, assign you some, uh, some topic to learn, and uh, as, a, as at the end of this topic you will pass exam. Um, so that would give you a structural process, educational process in advanced mathematics. I certainly uh, suggest you to do this. Very beneficial. Um, all right, thanks very much and good luck.